Hello and welcome to another episode of Supreme Court Judgments of the Week on Verdictum. In this segment, we bring to you the most interesting judgments passed by the Supreme Court during the previous week. Let's begin. Union of India vs Air Commodore N.K. Sharma In a recent development, the Supreme Court delivered a crucial judgment, asserting that a tribunal does not possess the authority to direct the government to formulate policies. The ruling came in response to an appeal filed by the central government under Section 31, Subsection 1 of the Armed Forces Tribunal Act of 2007, challenging the judgment of the Armed Forces Tribunal, New Delhi. The case involved Air Commodore N. K. Sharma, who contested that upon superannuation of the previous Judge Advocate General Air, no promotion board was formed to consider him for the Air Vice Marshal post, despite him meeting the criteria for the same. Instead, he was considered by another promotion board, along with nine other persons, who, apart from him, were found eligible for the position of JAG. And N.K. Sharma was found eligible for the position of AVM, which, however, was not accepted by the Ministry of Defence. On such non-acceptance of the recommendation of the promotion board, the dispute began. The matter was placed before the Armed Forces Tribunal that directed the government to promote N.K. Sharma in terms of a new policy framed upon the tribunal's direction. The matter in appeal reached a two-judge bench of the top court, comprising Justice Abhay S. Oka and Justice Sanjay Karol, who deliberated on the questions whether the tribunal could issue directions to the government to frame policy for filling up the list of Judge Advocate General and whether the tribunal had the authority to make an order opposed to the promotion board's recommendation. The Supreme Court acknowledged the jurisdiction of the tribunal in handling disputes related to promotions and vacancies, but asserted that the role of the tribunal is quasi-judicial and confined by governing legislation. The court stressed that policy-making is beyond the purview of the judiciary, including tribunals. The top court then overturned the judgment of the tribunal. In reference Article 370 of the Constitution, in a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court unanimously upheld the abrogation of Article 370 of the Constitution of India, which granted special status to the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. A five-judge constitution bench led by the Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachur, alongside Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaur, Justice Sanjeev Khanna, Justice B. R. Gawai and Justice Surya Khan concluded that Article 370 deemed a temporary provision and represented asymmetric federalism and not sovereignty. The top court asserted that owing to the temporary nature of the provision, the president holds the authority to revoke it. The court further directed the initiation of steps to conduct elections in the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly by September 30th next year. Additionally, it upheld the bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories, namely Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. The CGI highlighted that the Constituent Assembly of JNK was never intended to be a permanent body and that the erstwhile state does not have internal sovereignty different from other states of the country. Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, in a separate but conquering judgment, proposed that a Truth and Reconciliation Commission be established to conduct an in-depth inquiry into human rights violations committed both by state as well as non-state actors in the Kashmir Valley, with a particular focus on incidents dating back to 1980s and recommend measures. In this regard, Justice Call said, the exercise should be time-bound. There is already an entire generation of youth that has grown up with feelings of distrust. And it is to them that we owe the greatest duty of reparation. Justice Call also underscored that the commission, once constituted, should not function as a criminal court, but should adopt a humanized and personalized approach, allowing individuals to share their experiences freely. He left the determination of the commission's structure and operation to the government, acknowledging the challenge of recommending its setup as beyond the court's realm. In conclusion, Justice Call expressed hope and said that much will be achieved when Kashmiris open their hearts to embracing the past and facilitate the people who were compelled to migrate to come back with dignity. In reference, interplay between Indian Stamp Act and Indian Arbitration Act. In a significant ruling, the Supreme Court's seven-judge constitution bench unanimously observed that unstamped or inadequately stamped arbitration agreements do not become void or void ab initio or unenforceable 
and such a defect is curable in nature. However, such agreements cannot be admissible in evidence under Section 35 of the Stamp Act. The ruling delivered by a bench comprising the Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachur, Justice S.K. Kaul, Justice Sanjeev Khanna, Justice B.R. Gawai, Justice Surya Khan, Justice J.B. Pardiwala and Justice Manoj Mishra highlighted the need for detailed consideration of evidence and submissions in addressing the objections to stamp duty. The court sat for reconsideration of the correctness of the NN Global Mercantile Private Limited versus Indo Unique Flame Limited judgment, which, with a three to majority, ruled that an agreement which is not sufficiently stamped cannot be said to be an enforceable contract, as per Section 2H of the Contract Act. The top court overruled the said judgment to the extent that it conflicted with the current ruling. The court also underlined that determining the jurisdiction of an arbitration tribunal on the grounds of unpaid or insufficient stamp duty requires a thorough examination of both laws and facts. Mandating courts to decide stamping issues at the stage of sections 8 and 11 of the Arbitration Act, which deals with the power to refer parties to arbitration where there is an arbitration agreement and appointment of arbitrators respectively. According to the judgment, the court's role is limited to assessing the prima facie existence of an arbitration agreement. With that, I am Anya Singh. Thank you for watching Verdictum. For more such informative content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and download the Verdictum app on iOS and Android for latest legal updates.